everyone, my name is Marie Chang and today I will be doing the 100 heads in 10 days challenge. I'm also doing this in 10 ways, which just means that I'm going to use 10 different mediums to do my 100 head drawings. This crayon drawing was the first time that I have drawn traditionally for a really, really long time. I have to admit, I really, you know, haven't been putting all of my energy in using the tools that I grew up drawing with, and I've been doing a lot more digital art, but it was really fun to actually pick something up physically and be able to get into it. I think this third drawing here is when I start to feel more comfortable working with crayon, and I was like, you know what, I think I'm just gonna do it with one color and just try to get this to look the best that it can. I try to also give myself a time limit. I didn't want to spend more than 10 minutes on each drawing. I've sped it up here obviously just so you're not stuck looking at hours and hours of me drawing, but I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't noodling away forever. I was actually really happy with how that red head portrait turned out. I decided to add some hearts around it because I thought it was fun. Um, and now I'm trying the green, which is a little more light than I had hoped when it showed up in the camera. But again, it was just fun to work with all these different colors and try this medium that I think isn't traditionally seen as something that people would try to draw with. I was actually not really happy with how this particular one turned out. I thought it looked a little terrifying. But I think the good thing about this exercise is that you're forced to move on. And even if one of the drawings isn't perfect, you can just try another one. Like I was really happy with how that blue one turned out. I liked how this one turned out. And for every drawing that I did enjoy, there was always at least one though that I was just like, oh, I wish I didn't draw this. I actually really like drawing with ballpoint pen. You have like a surprising amount of control over your actual art. And I just like experimenting with it. It's also was used to be my medium of choice back in school when I would draw on all of my homework so I'm definitely used to it I also love drawing like older subjects I think it's so fun to draw wrinkles and to explore how those shapes look so that was something that I really really enjoyed when I was going through this exercise I actually really struggled to draw like pretty women as I noticed as I was going through this it was just really really hard and oh boy this one turned out terribly I tried to shade with the ballpoint pen and that just I, I did not do it correctly but as I kept moving along I would discover different things about it and I finally found a process that I think you know matches my naturally cartoony instinct with a more realistic presentation this part I did in highlighter. I had never drawn in highlighter before, but I actually really, really like it. Something that kind of weirdly worked in my favor was that the blue one was pretty much dying. And so I was able to get some really unique textures and shading with it. I really enjoyed using the different colors as well to bring out the different characters in the portraits. And I think highlighter is something that most people wouldn't initially see as like a tool of choice when drawing, but I actually really liked it. And I think I'm gonna try to use it more frequently in my work. After finishing this one up, I went back to a grayscale tool. I wanted to try my mechanical pencil. Again, this is something that I used to draw with when I was in school, just it was available to me. And I actually really, really like drawing with a me mechanical pencil. It's something that is really precise and gives you a lot of control again, but I also feel like something about it makes me feel a need to not erase as much. I know it's like a pencil and it is erasable, but it just forced me to make a lot of decisions with my lines and not be too hesitant about it. I really liked how this particular drawing turned out. I noticed in a lot of my art that it just inherently looks cartoony, but you know, I do come from an animation background, so it's hard not to. And it was a good exercise for me to try to get the proportions, especially the eyes, more realistic and similar to the actual object that I was drawing. It was a very unique experience and different than the way that I would normally approach something. Using the pink and blue pen was also really fun. This drawing turned out looking like Edward Cullen, just completely unintentionally, but I just liked the way that these drawings turned out, especially next to each other. I really wanted to use this kind of pen because it's something that I, again, normally wouldn't draw with. I got these pens because they were pretty, and I don't know if you've seen those like really fancy notes that people take, but I used to use pens like this in high school and just take like colorful, engaging notes to try to stay, 
you know, awake during class. And now that I no longer use them for that purpose, it's fun to bring them into my artwork. Again, really precise and a lot of control, which I really enjoy. And it's something that you can't erase. Like this one turned out terrifying. I do not like that drawing at all. It was really messed up, but I had to just move on and keep going. And that's something that I like about ink. This one was a red brush pen that I found randomly in an airport. I really liked the variation in width of the thick to thin in this brush. And it was just a really, really fun uh, brush to draw with. Again, love drawing old people, so much more fun. I was trying to draw a pretty girl here and she just ends up looking old anyways. So I think I should have just drawn more, you know, elderly individuals to begin with. And overall, this was the only drawing that turned out actually moderately pretty looking. But again, this is a learning exercise. And I think if you're doing this and you feel frustrated with your ability, like don't feel bad. So my next one was watercolor. I have not drawn in watercolor or painted in watercolor for so long. Also, this is not the right kind of paper to use, as you can tell, because it's getting all wrinkled. But I want to keep in the same sketchbook. I started to add some more fantasy characters just to mix things up. And those were super, super fun. I really like drawing like objects and people that look like they wouldn't be in our everyday world. And I think when I deviate from that, I definitely struggle to. But this dude was super fun to draw. It was like a big old monster thing and it was fun to be able to pick the different colors I could use and experiment with shading. Again, watercolor is not my primary medium and it felt very bizarre to use it at all and I definitely felt like I was making a lot of mistakes. I'm sure artists who use watercolor regularly are watching this time lapse like, oh my goodness, this is not the way that I would do it. But I learned a lot from this process and I just think that in the future I will definitely not use this kind of paper and I, I will maybe plan out a lot of my color choices before just going in there and using this brush and the pigment the way that I did. So this next medium technically isn't a medium. I just decided to like cartoonify everything that I was drawing, but I did use a black brush pen for this. Um, I just decided it would be fun to see if I could do like caricatures on the spot. It was honestly a lot harder than I thought it would be. And it was tough because I wasn't like matching a specific animation style but I just wanted to, to look more exaggerated and cartoony without necessarily being a character per se. And I struggled a lot more than I thought I would with this, but it was a good exercise and it was fun to play around with different face shapes and different types of lips and different types of eyes and just really pushing certain proportions that I normally wouldn't. This next one is an exercise we always do in art school. It's just a continuous line one where you can't lift your pen up from the paper at all when you're drawing the image. And this one gave me some really weird looking things. You know, it's tough to get all the proportions and the perspective perfectly when you literally can't make any mistakes because you'll see all of your lines. But I kind of liked how the, some of these turned out. They were really bizarre looking, but you could still kind of tell what the source material was and I do enjoy that even when it's not, you know, the pristine image of that person's uh, appearance, you can still see the spirit of them in it and you can kind of see what the intention the artist had. This one's my favorite of all of these and I like the way that that one turned out a lot. But yeah, overall, this was just like a fun, quick exercise. The last type that I decided to do was mixed media. In this version, I could use any of the materials I had used previously. And so I started off with just that black ink pen, which I really enjoyed and added some shadows and definition with the highlighter. Um, and then this time I went in just with the highlighter and started with a really rough shape and then added details afterwards. But this was a really cool way for me to see like, okay, what are my preferences when I'm drawing? Are there certain things that I use as a crutch that I really like? Are there certain areas that I have weaknesses in that are revealed, I mean, clearly <laughs> through just the use of different mediums because oftentimes your tools can enable your strengths, but they can also hide your weaknesses. And so varying them and being free to use all of them at once you know, really show what you gravitate towards when you're given a choice. I started this one using the watercolor and then I added the details in with pen afterwards. It looked kind of like those like fashion drawings that people do, but again, nothing close to the actual professional version of it, but my own version of it. 
This one was a combination of me trying to make the guy look more cartoony, but then also throwing in some color. And this one was different. I wanted to do, you know, some line art, but using the highlighter and the different types of colored inks to create a different feeling. And then this last one was just the very psycho looking cartoon uh, girl. So yeah, again, just working with what I had to try to figure out a different way to show the same image. I really learned to love using that highlighter. I think there's something about it that just feels very unique to me. And it's also something that's very accessible. So even if you don't have really fancy, expensive art supplies at home, you can do all of these things for next to nothing. Like you can find some scrap paper, you have a mechanical pencil, you have a highlighter, you have a pen somewhere around. Like it, I do like that this method makes it so that art is more accessible for everyone. And yeah, that was 100 heads in 10 days and 10 ways. And thanks again for watching.